Hey guys, welcome back to the shop today. Hand tools play a big role in my shop. I use them 90% of the time, and if I use a power tool, it's usually just for ripping something down that's really long in length and that I need to get done in a short amount of time. Anytime I can do it, I try to find a hand tool to actually work with being a hand plane, a chisel, a marking knife, a handsaw, and today we're going to be talking about handsaws, how to choose them, what to look for, and also how to refinish them. So as you can see over here, I have quite a few handsaws, and I've purchased some off of eBay, some locally in antique shops, and even some going around to like yard sales and things like that. When you're choosing handsaws, there are a few things that you want to pay attention to. That way you don't have a lot of work that you got to put back into them. One thing that you should do is get to know handsaws. Go online and just research on the different brand handsaws, years, makes, models, things like that. You can tell a lot of things by the medallions right here. Somebody made a website documenting all the different distant handsaws, including each medallion that they made. This has a good point for researching and going back and looking at the medallions and seeing when they were made. Usually, for instance, if this handsaw has a medallion that says Distin and it has USA on it, all of these were made after 1953. So that's a good thing to know. That way if you're out looking and you see one that has USA, you know that it was made after 1953 and if you find different ones that some of them have like a Philida or just Philly and things like that and that tells you what different years the distance were made. One thing you want to do is know what you're looking for. If you're actually looking for a specific saw know what you're looking for. This is a rip saw. You can tell because it's got less teeth on it and the pattern that the teeth have been filed to. You want to also make sure that there's no kink in the blade anywhere. This one is very straight. It hasn't been beat up at all. You don't see any hammer marks where somebody has tried to straighten it out. And you also want to make sure all of the teeth are there. If you don't have all the teeth, it's not worth it unless maybe only a couple bucks because you would have to file every tooth down so that it was a flat edge and then you have to file all the teeth back in. Now that's a good option if you want to take a $2 saw and change it from a rip saw into a crosscut saw or something like that. But to me it's not worth it. If it's missing teeth I just go right by it and I just leave it behind unless it's like a really old saw. If you're into etches, you really want to make sure that you have a good etch right here. This one, you can see the etch through all the little crud that's on there. This saw right here, it's got so much crud on it, I haven't even tried to really clean it looking for an etch, but you never know. If you get down low, there might be one in there. But if you're really into the etches, make sure that it's got a decent etch, not a lot of rust, things like that. Also look for cracks in the handles. If you've got parts chipping out or if there's pieces broken, it might be harder to repair unless you're just gonna want to go ahead and make a whole new saw handle. There's quite a few handles out there that were laminated together, such as this one right here. It's got the different pieces together. I don't really like the look of this one, so when I go and redo this saw, I'll end up just making a new handle for it because, I mean, I don't really like that design with the different layers. So now that you've went out and you picked up your own handsaw, it may be your first, maybe your 200th handsaw, now it's time to go ahead and refinish it, get it cleaned up, and get it back into working order. Some of the things that you're going to want to have is some sandpaper. You can have all sorts of different grits from 220, this is uh, 300. You can have some that's 120 depending on how much buildup you have. You want to have a flat block for when you're sanding your blade. And you want to have some rougher paper to actually do the refinish work on the handle. And I have this little brush to work on the hardware on the handle. You can also use a bench grinder with the wire wheel, stuff like that. Some people don't like it, but it gets the job done quicker. One of the tools that you're going to have to have is obviously a screwdriver to get this done. 
So first thing first is wanting to take all of the hardware off and that's just simply unscrewing everything. Sometimes these uh, parts don't want to come undone very well. So what you may have to do is actually push it on the table Use your screwdriver and pop it loose. You might have to put a pad underneath to hold some kind of gripping power on the either the medallion or the other side of the screw. But you're just going to take those off. And this was a little bit loose whenever I got it. So what I'm going to need to do is make sure that I can tighten it up afterwards. I've got this piece just to pop these nuts out. You just want to push it out the other side. This handsaw right here, it's got a warranted superior medallion on it. There's nothing special about this medallion. The warranted superior medallions are usually second hand or second rate handsaws. They weren't top quality so the companies handed them off and most of the time the warranted superior medallions got put on these ones but nonetheless I have quite a few of these and I haven't ever found any problems with them so after you get all of these pieces off I usually try to find the counterpart and put them back together that way you don't lose them it keeps stuff in order a little bit better so now all you have is your blade and your handle. So now you got your two different parts. I got some debris in there. Just kind of get some of that out. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is work on the handle because this will take some drying time after we get done with it. So you can see it's got some age to it. It's got some wear on the actual outside. And then where the the handle is where the the hands would have been rubbing and still you can see the fresh lacquer on it. So let's go ahead and get this part refinished. So we're going to set the blade off to the side. We're going to work on the handle right now. I'm going to start off with a 60 grit right here. I don't have any sheet paper right now so I'm just going to use this disc paper. But you want to make sure that you go in the same direction as the grain would anyway. Just like on every project you are going to be sanding through all the lacquer and everything so you don't want to tear the wood up and have to really work on it. You can see how easy that stuff's coming off right now with this 60 grit. You're just going to want to Sometimes I leave some of the marking there because after we get the finishing back on there, it leaves a nice color to it and still leaves it like it's really been used instead of a brand new saw. I'm not even putting much pressure on this. I'm just trying to get all the, all the rough stuff off of here. And then I'll start working my way back up through the different sandpapers. Right now I'm right now I'm at 320 grit, and you can see I've kept some of the wear marks on it. And I haven't really gotten rid of everything. I'm just going over it now, making sure that I get rid of all the sandpaper scratch marks and everything like that. Make sure that it's really smooth to hold. Because you don't want to be using something that's uncomfortable. So that's why I'm going up to 320. You can stop at 220 if you want, but I'm going on. So I've gotten this handsaw handle completely done now. It's been sanded up to 320, and I've got this Watco rejuvenating oil. Picked this up a little while ago, and I really like the look of it on these handsaw handles. And all you got to do, you can use boiled linseed oil if you want and different things like that. Uh, but I like the way this kind of keeps it a little bit lighter. The boiled linseed oil tends to darken up quite a bit. 
I use it on like hand planes and things like that. I like the darker look on the, the hand planes, but this one stays a little bit lighter. And you can see how it just soaked right in because it was hand saws don't get used anymore, so they're they're drying. This is good for them. You want to let them soak in there, and I try to get them pretty wet. Make sure I get all the cracks and all the crevices and everything that's in there. And you can see how it still has plenty of the wear spots on it, which keeps it looking like it's got that age to it. So that people aren't like, oh, you just made that. It's still got the original handle on it. You just refinished it. So we're going to set this to the, to the side. Try to get some of those hardware holes. So we're going to set this off to the side and let all this oil soak in for a little bit and then we'll come back and wipe it off. Now we're going to be moving on to the hardware. This is pretty grungy. It's got a lot of build up on it and just you can see that over the years it's just kind of gotten all the brass covered up by just filth. So what I've got is just a scotch Bright pad. You can do this with a wire brush. You could do it on a bench grinder if you wanted to with a wire wheel. But I like these scotch Bright pads. They, they do a pretty good job on it. And afterwards you can go back with like a thousand grit sandpaper if you wanted to and really polish these up. But these just, you just got to rub on them and it'll shine these right back up to, to where they look brand new. You can see there's a big change in that already. And you want to make sure that you get the the edge as well. That way if any of it sticks up, you don't see that underneath. So you just rotate that and just You might not be able to get these 100% clean. There might be some scratches in them that have little spots of dirt and debris but for the most part you can tell right there I mean that's that's clean right there and then that's what it was so I mean that's the totally that's a good cleanup I've had some where you almost can't get them clean even on the wire wheel but the scotch bright pad does a lot better job I think and it keeps your hands away from anything that's spinning. This is fairly simple and quick. Gets the same job done. And there's no noise, no dust, no anything like that. You just... If that's one reason why you are unplugged, it's a good thing to do the scotch brick pads. Look how clean that came. That almost looks brand new, but it's got some years on it because of the scratches. So now we're going to go over to the medallion. The medallion is hard to clean up sometimes. That's why I use the wire brush. I usually just try to scrape in there. I try to hold it as best as I can. And just work it away. And this one's coming pretty clean already. They make different kind of wire brushes. They make some that are brass still, so you don't really tear into it. They're a little bit softer. But I haven't ever noticed any scratches with this. So that one's fairly clean. We're going to clean up the, the edges around it. I mean that's that's pretty good right there. You can see what it says and everything. The eagle looks good. There's a little bit of dirt down in there, but I don't think we're gonna be able to get that much cleaner in there. 
just because of all the lettering and stuff like that. So we'll go to the other side real quick. And I never really worry about the inside that's going to be inside the handle. If you got a lot of debris on your threaded area, you can take a wire brush to those. But as long as these uh, screw close nice and tight, I don't ever really worry about it. Now this is the most time consuming part right here. It just depends on the amount of buildup you have on your blade and stuff like that. But I'm going to start off by pouring a little bit of water on here because I've got wet dry sandpaper and this will help with that. So this is going to be a lot of work just to get the debris off. I'm starting off with 220 paper and I've got a block of wood. It's very important to have the block of wood, especially when you're working around the etch, because you do not want to tear the, the etch apart. If you go too low, there's no recovering back from it. It's just gone. So I'm just gonna work back and forth. When you're sanding on the blade, you want to make sure that you stay going lengthwise because that's how it was manufactured and that's the way the metal grain is going. You don't want to go back and forth this way or else you'll leave a bunch of scratches in it just like wood. Now the etch is not on this side, that's why I can use just sandpaper in my hands. When I flip it over, if I'm working around the etch, I will definitely be using that block. But this. When you're working with your hands, helps get some of the deeper debris out from underneath the metal. Right now, I'm just using 400 grit sandpaper on the same side. I'm just trying to get any kind of scratches out that I've made. I had went from 220 to the three, uh, 300 or whatever grit that was, and then I'm up at 400. Trying to get a little bit of cleanup done but this has changed a big time and it looks really good right now you aren't gonna get every handsaw perfectly clean like it was new out of the factory so this is i'm good with that i like how this looks already so it's nice and clean Just a few pitted spots right here and here but that's nothing so now we will go work with the dangerous side. It's got an etch in there that I can see pretty well. And I'm gonna work very carefully around it. Hopefully I don't destroy it and then we'll come back and use um, some perma blue and try to really make it stand out. So hopefully we don't ruin that. So right now I've went ahead and gotten this side completely cleaned up and I'm using this stuff called perma blue. I had an etch that you could just barely see and what I'm trying to do is bring it back out so you can see it really well after it's all cleaned up. So I'm just following the directions on here and using the a little bit of a saturated towel and just putting it on and just going through the steps that it says on the bottle. This has worked on two out of the three saws that I've tried it on. I think that the one saw that didn't work on very well. I think it was just too far gone. So we just gotta let it sit here for a minute or so. And then it says just to be able to rinse and wipe it off. So we're gonna try to get it cleaned up. get the blue off and then I'm just going to be going back over it and you can use steel wool I've used these scotch bright pads on it and it's and it's worked each time Now you can see the etch a little bit better. It's 
kind of hard to see in there because there's so much debris or so much of the dirt still there. I can see it right here to right here. You guys can't see it on the on a camera. I'm trying to get it so you guys can see it. You can see it right there. It kind of hits on the glare. It's there though. I can see it. I'm gonna try to do a couple more of the perma blues and see how well it does try to bring it out a little bit more you can do it a couple different times let's go ahead and put it back together though Now we're done with this saw. It's got a new fresh handle on it. The blade is completely cleaned up. I've got the etch to where I, hit, I did not destroy it. I'm gonna do the perma blue a couple of times more and then hopefully it'll really stand out. Um, I'm gonna do that over the next couple of days though. So now this hand saw is ready just to go ahead and be sharpened and after sharpening, it's ready for use. You guys could either resell them or put them back in on your saw till and pull them out whenever you're ready to be using them. Hope you guys found this video useful. Hope you guys go buy a couple hand saws, be able to refinish them. Thank you for watching. If you guys are new, go ahead, hit that subscription button, check out all my other videos. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit that thumbs up button and share it around on all the social media. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.